out a brand new game. Yeah, well, this is the first time I'm playing it, so yeah, a new game. Confirm. Okay, there we go. I'm playing with the Joy-Cons disconnected because the the grippy thing I can't find it. And I don't know where my Pro Controller is either right now. Arthurton, you'll never want to leave. That sounds like a threat. <laughs> Shady character in a over uh, coat and fedora here. Creepy. <laughs> yeah, I think he's creepy. Sorry, got the plague starter. That's okay. Found statues with threatening auras, right? Danger, no swimming. <laughs> Apparently I'm getting in a boat. I am creepy man with a briefcase and an umbrella and I'm getting in a boat. I'm getting on a boat in the rain. I am surely up to no good. <laughs> Assuming I'll know when to stop. Thunderstorm, that's even worse, right? Right? Oh, what the heck? Oh, wait a minute. I just figured something out. Hang on. There's lines on here. we go. Ha <laughs> I figured it out. I figured it out. Oh, this isn't sus at all. up my briefcase and I'm gonna go down the crazy dude. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> Come on up then. <laughs> what? Who? It'd be cold by the time I got there. Okay, dude just woke up from snoring on his, his typewriter. Oh, and there's a doggy. Oh, I must have dozed off. Yep, you did. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. Oh, tea usually calms me down. <laughs> We'd warm it up for you. What do you say, Rufus? I think Rufus is having us news. Nope. <laughs> yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. Oh, so no tea then? Okay. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. Ah, oh, there's a thought. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. <laughs> okay. Or will it? <laughs> right. 
right? <laughs> to the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. Okay. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined by lustrous forests. Okay. And perched on the edge of a pristine lake. Okay. Sounds picturesque. It had a main street with all the essentials, including a place to sip coffee. Grubman's Grocery, I like that. Mr. Bean's Coffee Shop. Agatha Krusty's! <laughs> I like that one! Agatha Krusty's. <laughs> I like that. Pharmacy and Magic, the Great Placebo. <laughs> These store names slay me right now. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. It even had a museum no one ever visited. <laughs> a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Sure. Let's go with that. Typical. Maybe even forgettable. I don't know. Agatha Christie's is something I wouldn't forget. <laughs> but there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. Shady guys with briefcases going under the lake in a big tube? Actually, it was a girl. Who is currently flossing. Her name was... Jenny LeClue. <laughs> and she was the world's greatest detective. <laughs> and she's, what, nine? <laughs> it's arcane property tax policy. <laughs> right? Finkelstein residence. Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. I'm as old music. <laughs> I'm as old Richard? Music. Yes, I got it. I did, and my answer is no. <laughs> okay. That's I a understand, vague, that, isn't it? but well, yes, of course, but no, 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 nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. I don't know what it is, but he sounds very serious. It goes against everything my books stand for. Dog portrait. I know it's so cute. No, not yet, but. If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying. Somehow, I don't think he's going to listen, dude. I've got some bad news, old chum. There's no easy way to say it, so I've attached the latest book sales numbers. Nowadays, young readers want more mystery and danger, and you're losing them with Jenny's increasingly timid and repetitive adventures. One bit of good news, it's too late for the stores to cancel their orders for the next book, so we're going to give you one last go and see if you can breathe some life into the old girl. <sighs> We want you to try a proper murder mystery, start killing people off, add some drama. The bottom line is, if you don't step it up, I'm afraid it will be a case of Jenny in the last hurrah. Hmm. Another positive news, someone from a newspaper family reviewed your last book. You would know a good story if it bit you in the rump. <laughs> His name is Finkelstein. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to 
explain the reason why I find that funny. <laughs> but I, I find the name Finkelstein very funny. Um, there is an episode of the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. There's a there's a character who works in the underworld and like rats people out to the to the heroes and they call him Fink. His name is Finkelstein. <laughs> that's that's why that makes me laugh. I took the worst bits out. <laughs> I imagine all this might come as a bit of a shock, but we've got to move with the times. Throw in a murder or two, a dash of real tragedy, and who knows? Maybe you've got one great story left in you. I'll ring you later to discuss. Sorry about your career. Chin up, though, eh? Richard Inkwell. Squash next week. At least you'll have some time to work on that backhand soon. <laughs> oh, dear. I refuse to change my formula. Arthurton will always be a safe and happy place. You don't understand what you're asking for. You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down? Yeah, this is true. Kill off my characters and destroy everything I've built over the last 30 years? Fine. I'll give you what you want. He's gonna put his publisher in the story and kill him off, watch. But I warn you. I'm a stream of consciousness writer, and you have unleashed my fury. <laughs> I Good called day, it, sir. Boring, predictable. Bah. Well, if it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. <laughs> it should have been another perfect day in Arthurton, but today was different, and nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny LeClue was dead. What? Her skin was pale. Her eyes glassy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? The fuck? Mrs. LeClue, she's doing it again. Jenny LeClue, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. He 
teaches dumb students, terrible cook, great mom. But he's doing it wrong. As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. <laughs> I am, rather. With only the evidence laid before us, we build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time, until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Mrs. LeClue. Okay, you've all had a chance to study the body? Who can postulate how she met her demise? Ooh, uh, me, me! I think it was an accident? Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor. And cracked her head open. Like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really, how can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> oh. Actually, you're both wrong. What? It was cold blooded murder. Murder? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh, yes, there is. It was murder, and I can prove it. The case of the dead lab assistant. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Then she'd analyze the data, and finally... Deduce the real cause of death. Nice. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. on your face the victim has a green smudge on her lips it's not lipstick no it looks like poison <laughs> I've acted in enough murder mysteries to know what the poison on the mouth looks like <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of perfectly good coffee Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving how old is Jenny? She looks too young to be drinking coffee. Chalky green residue on the rim. <laughs> Smells like burnt matches. Sulfur? The floor is wet and slippery, but also immaculately clean. Approximately eight sizes too big and covered in mud. Poison is always radioactive green for obvious to the viewers. <laughs> exactly! So, fun fact for those of you who haven't known me for years, I used to act in murder mysteries before COVID. Uh, I used to act in murder mysteries, and in one of the scripts, we actually had to have poison on us. And so I mixed up a little vial of powdered sugar and lemon lime kool-aid together and that was my theater poison <laughs> that or they go the exact opposite oh yeah the undetectable poison she's got a rip in her sweater jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable but her grandmother had knitted it and so it was her favorite this <laughs> sounds tasty right 
The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. EG Iacane powder, which is <laughs> powder looks and tasteless, which is why it's so hilarious when, hilarious when Prince Humperdinck smells and tastes the stuff to use on Vicini. <laughs> right? <sighs> I love Princess Bride. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. They were her window to the world and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. And says that it's Iacane powder, he'd bet his life on it. <laughs> right? It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. <laughs> She'd worn it ever since. I've seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. Jenny was a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. How do I know the victim didn't slip? Jim's boots are filthy. They should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. So where are they? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Hmm. <laughs> okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? What was the real cause of death? There's a green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. <laughs> it smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus! Also found in... Common Garden Fertilizer. Ugh. Look at you all detectiving, right? <laughs> the same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. Someone clearly wanted her dead. <laughs> ah, the case of the dead. I believe last the instant. verb is sleuthing. <laughs> Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. No footprints in an unshattered mug? She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is the story of a scorned ex-lover. Jenny? The gardener, enacting his revenge. Jenny? A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite <laughs> enough, thank you. Mom's like, that's enough! What happens to the gardener? Is this gonna be on the test? <laughs> Remember, class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. Oh my. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side, even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So have a light lunch. <laughs> so have a light lunch. <laughs> the students need to think for themselves, Jenny. That's why they're here at Gumbolt. To learn. I just figured we all had places to go. 
speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Wait, before you go, I have something for you. Cool! What is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? The Leclus didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had <laughs> developed a sixth sense for finding them. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. journal to Jenny there was nothing better than the aroma of a fresh leather notebook there is something nice about that I will admit it smelled like mystery <laughs> without missing a beat she did what any detective worth their salt would do she decorated it <laughs> A new journal meant new adventures. She imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. And on the first page, her mother had written an inscription. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. Aww. That was weird. Jenny... I wanted to talk about... Um, to say... Uh, Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. Her mum was hesitating. What could be causing her to act so out of character? Crossed arms. Furrowed brow. Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Her mother was about to get... Emotional! Oof. <laughs> I've really gotta go. I really wanted her potato revenge. <laughs> no, Jenny, wait. I need your help. What? Really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It was extremely unusual for her mother to ask for help. It must be something very important. Tracing the steps of a deranged killer? A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve? I misplaced the students' essays on decapitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. I have to run. Wow, the case of the misplaced papers. Are you sure you want to trust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around <laughs> here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm or just really good at ignoring it. <laughs> A little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. <laughs> uh, we will help our mother because we are okay, a good mom. daughter. Okay, Mom. I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. <laughs> Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shiny F to an overconfident student. <laughs> Don't course. push your luck. Please. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Find the papers and go straight home. But I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for your class. Well then, I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need to pack. This again? Look, I've considered your offer, Mom, and I'm going to have to decline. <laughs> I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's meatloaf in the fridge. No buts, no. <laughs> late again? What are you up to? Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you're told for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? 
<laughs> She's got the gap tooth. I'm wondering how old this kid is. All right, let's find these papers and get out of here. Examine jam jar. One of Jenny's earliest memories was making raspberry jam with her mom. It's the perfect substitute for blood in class demonstrations. And better tasting than the pig's blood the textbook recommends. <laughs> Looking rather trim today, Ethan. New diet? What's the matter? Lost your funny bone? <laughs> Becoming a great detective took more than book smarts. You needed real life experience, and Jenny was always on the lookout for a chance to get her hands dirty. Probably somewhere between seven and ten ish, yeah. Probably. Never leaves her coffee in it, then it never ever. Do not touch. Hmm. Someone must be running an experiment. Mm. <laughs> Gross. Pretty soon it's gonna sprout legs. Wait a minute, I see them. They're behind the chalkboard. How do I get behind the chalkboard? I see them behind the chalkboard. There's a stack of papers behind the chalkboard. Oh, wait. Hang on. I thought the prologue said she was nine. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. One of the students' term papers. You can tell by the terrible handwriting and erroneous conclusions. Mom must have put them <laughs> behind the chalkboard. I was in the kitchen cooking, so I might be mistaken. I don't know. I, I honestly don't remember. Yep, there they are. Found you. Time to get out of here. Jenny looked around the room one last time. Was she ready to leave? Alright, let's get out of here.